Savage crap to all my fellow carpenters out there. Creative Thoughts series Raising River Cast Kitchen Table. In the first episode, I went shopping. I bought this nice lab from a friend of mine, Timber Factory. Then I went to my laboratory and I began to craft this lab, make it ready for the mold. In today's second episode, I'm going to complete the process of making this lab ready for the mold. Before jumping to it, if you think I deserve, of course, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for future videos notification. And now, without any further ado, let's to build some and let's to have fun with! In the last episode of this series, link above my head, I cut and flattened the slab, turned it into more manageable weight. Now, with a 60 grit paper and my belt sander, I'm removing scratch marks left by the router bit. This is the concept that I have in mind. Pretend, please, that is our table. The black areas represent hood. The red, where I'm going to cast epoxy into. Number one represent the epoxy river. Number two, a recess that makes the table more interesting. And finally, number three, the live edge. I begin with the number one, the epoxy river. I measure the slab center and I'm going to cut it in half. At this stage of the process, I don't pretend to end up with a perfect straight cut. In the first episode of this series, I cut the slab bigger than its final size, that is 140 per 90 cm. I cut it with a length of 150 cm, so once epoxy will be cast and cured, I will have 10 cm of spear material to cut refine the table edges to perfect straight and 90 degrees corners.
the slab is now cut in two parts. I turn the irregular shaped sides facing each other and here we have space for the epoxy river numbered as one in my sketch. With a marker I'm sketching the recess numbered as two And finally, I sketch the live edge labeled as number three. Now I begin to do the cut using my jigsaw and a long blade. proceed with the final cut, the live edge, numbered as three in my sketch. and hammer let's make the cut more interesting look more natural as they were made by nature refining the edges with a 40 grit paper and my orbital sander still with a 40 grit paper I finish the process with my oscillating multi-tool that can reach um, angles that my orbital uh, sender can't. And now I repeat uh, the same process with the other cut, the live edge. I begin uh, to give uh, a sort of shape uh, with my chisels and hammer. I'm trying uh, to give in uh, to the cut a more natural look as uh, it was made by nature.
as I did before with the 40 grit paper and my orbital sander, I'm refining the edges. Now that uh, the cut uh, are done, I'm going to turn uh, the two slabs so I can work uh, with uh, their uh, back part. The two slabs weigh 60, maybe 70 kilos. Once the resin will be cast and cured, the overall weight will be around 80 kilos at least. With the mold that I'm building in the video series third episode, web link above my head, I square the two slabs. I don't pretend to have them precisely square, just an overall position at this stage of the process is fine. The epoxy river, once cured, will glue the two, two slabs together. However, because I'm dealing with a considerable weight, I will add steel insert to reinforce the structure. Steel inserts alongside the epoxy river will keep the two slabs firmly in place. I'm here in front of my drip press doing holes on the steel inserts that I'm going to use to assemble the two slabs together. I'm going to use screws like this. So let's measure the diameter. Is uh, three millimeter enough? Okay. Choose a proper uh, drill bit. Four millimeter. It's okay, a little bit bigger than the screw that I'm going to use. The steel bars that I'm drilling are made by hot roll steel and uh, as you know is a kind of mild steel. However, let's add some oil for cut. It uh, is going to preserve my drill bit's life length at least. All six uh, inserts are drilled, done. So let's change the drill bit um, with uh, a countersink drill bit. It is a 45 degrees bit to match screws head angle.
setting my drill press uh, cut depth. Here I am, holes are done. I sprayed steel bars with black acrylic paint to prevent rust and I'm re reinforcing the table with three inserts. Each one of them is hosting two steel bars. It's time now to cut the recesses for the steel inserts with my palm router and this jig that I just made with the mold that I'm building for this kitchen table side as a reference I square the steel bars and I mark their length and now with the overall length marked Let's frame, square the jig in place. And uh, here I am. Again, I don't pretend to be perfectly square cause at this time of the process is practically impossible however it doesn't matter now cause once epoxy will be cast and cured the kitchen table ready i will square the sides to perfect straight and 90 degrees corners I drill holes and uh, I screw the jig in firm in place. For the cut I use in a router and uh, half inch flush trim bits with a different length and bearing above the blade. I do the first cut with the, the shortest router bit. the proper cut depth. The steel bars are 80 mm thick, so I want a final cut depth of 30 mm depth that I will probably reach in three router passes. The first recess is done. Let's remove the jig. And uh, here I am, the bars are fitting perfectly. Let me check one more time. Okay, perpendicular to the mold side. Now 
Now that the old three recesses are cut, I'm going to fix in place the steel bars with Bondo, a kind of filler, strong glue for all material, all purposes, perfect to bound together wood and steel. Finally, I fix the steel bars with the screws and I give time to the glue to cure. I gave to the glue 48 hours. It is set and fully cured. And here I am, drilling holes on the internal sides of both slabs. Once the river epoxy will be cast, raising cured, will feel completely the holes, acting as the towers, reinforcing even more the overall structure. I had to drill holes before assembling the slabs with steel bars. Make my life easier. I forgot, sorry guys, I'm dealing with it right now. Solid slabs, as the one that I'm assembling, aren't totally as stable. Sudden change in temperature, humidity, moisture, liquids, generally speaking, it's a kitchen table. All are factors that could make the table move. So, steel inserts and all the other precautions are necessary to achieve a product that stands still for many years without any kind of problem whatsoever. Almost done. Last step of the process, then our table will be ready for the mold. I mixed and I'm stirring a small quantity of epoxy that I'm going to use to seal all the slab's edges. That is a very important step that can save a lot of trouble later on. With a new brush, I'm going to apply a thin coat of epoxy to seal completely all the edges that are going to enter in contact with the resin later on while casting. The epoxy seal coat, once cured, will seal all the timber pores, preventing extra hair bubbles keep forming. Again, let me please clarify the, uh, the concept once more. Don't skip this important step, especially if you don't know the kind of timber essence that you are working with. Seal all the timber pores, ensure proper epoxy casting without problem related to hair trapped inside the timber fibers pores. And here I am, job is done, the table is ready for the mold that I'm going to build in the next episode. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, see you soon in the next video of this series. Bye bye!